Amen, I say to thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Words taken from the Gospel of Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we shall consider the mercy shown to St. Dismas, the good thief. Our Lord Jesus Christ once told his apostles, Behold, we shall go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes and ancients, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And they shall mock him and spit on him and scourge him and kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. Immediately after this prediction, James and John make a bold request. They say, grant us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. Jesus replies, you know not what you ask. Can you drink of the chalice that I drink of or be baptized with the baptism wherewith I am baptized? They say, we can. And then Jesus says, you shall indeed drink of the chalice that I drink of, and with the baptism wherewith I am baptized, you shall be baptized, meaning that they shall suffer like him. But to sit on my right hand or on my left is not mine to give to you, but to them for whom it is prepared. When Christ drinks this chalice, suffers and dies on the cross. He does so in between two robbers, one on the right hand and the other on the left. These are known to us only vaguely as the bad thief, whose name is not remembered, crucified on our Lord's left, and the good thief, Saint Dismas, crucified on his right. Sometimes artistic depictions of the crucifixion show the thieves tied to their crosses to highlight our Lord's special suffering. But in reality, they were nailed to their crosses in their hands and their feet, just like our Lord. This worst of all punishments was only given to the worst of all criminals. And that's why the Jews were insistent that it be given to Christ. Dismas was not merely a thief then. He was likely also a murderer who had lived an entirely bad life. And so here Dismas is, in agonizing pain, facing a humiliating and miserable end to a wasted, evil life. Imagine him looking back at his life of sin, all his attempts to, to steal happiness have failed. All his attempts to live by his own rules have backfired. None of his crimes were worth the pain and misery he now undergoes. No one will miss him. Everyone is glad that another mess up of a life is getting disposed of, that this man who took so much from others is now getting what he deserves. He is about to conclude his waste of a life with a lonely, miserable death. But he is not the only sinner this day faced with the enormity of his sins. When Judas looked back at his betrayal, this one sin so filled his eyes that he could see nothing else. His shame at what he had done was more powerful than his fear or guilt. He died a hateful death at his own hands because he despaired of God's mercy. After witnessing Christ forgive so many sinners, he would have known that he too could have gone to Christ on the cross, even right up to him there, and begged forgiveness. But he would not. He would not humble himself. 
His shame, his pride prevented him. Meanwhile, the bad thief only has mockery and derision for Christ. He says, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. He taunts Christ along with the Jews. He even tries to manipulate him into freeing them. He has no love for Christ, no true repentance for his sins. He just wants to escape his punishment. And what about Barabbas? Had he known the two thieves? Surely he would have heard of their punishment. He was guilty of robbery and murder as well. Imagine him then that Friday morning, wondering when it would be his turn to be taken out and crucified. He must have been very surprised then when they opened up his cell not to crucify him, but to set him completely free. Every criminal's dream, to do the crime and get away with it. No punishment, no repentance necessary. Look, if they want to let me go instead of Christ, who am I to stop them? Every man for himself, right? He must have walked away thinking that he was the luckiest guy on earth. And so we should return to Dismas. What happens to him? First, he was sought out by Christ. The Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. He is the good shepherd who goes out in search of the one sheep that is astray, the one sheep that was about to perish. As recorded by many visionaries, Christ would have endured all his sufferings just to save one soul. He might as well have told Dismas, it has taken me a long time, but finally I have caught up to you. I knew you would be right here at this moment. I was born at just the right time, worked, preached, got myself arrested, all so that I would end up nailed to this cross right next to you. Christ is a light of grace which cannot be extinguished. His light shines out of him in his crucifixion, in his patience with his sufferings, with his revilers, in the love he has even for his torturers, pleading for their forgiveness. His light shines upon all. His grace extends to all that will receive it. Judas, the bad thief, the Jews close their hearts to it. Saint Dismas does not. Dismas rebukes the bad thief. Neither dost thou fear God, seeing thou art condemned under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done no evil. Then he says to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou shalt come into thy kingdom. Here he is, with perhaps only an hour left to live. He's a king, one who is about to enter his kingdom of glory. These are the eyes of faith, to see glory and triumph where the world sees only shame and failure. He has great repentance. He confesses his own guilt. More than this, unlike the bad thief, he does not ask to be spared his punishment, death on the cross. Unlike James and John, he does not ask a special place in the kingdom of glory, only that Christ remember him. He practices the spiritual works of mercy. He rebukes his fellow sinner and preaches Christ the King, turns his cross into a pulpit, 
And because of this, Saints Cyprian, Jerome, and Augustine call him a martyr. Some even say that the executioners broke his legs with increased fury because he had declared the innocence of Jesus. This love of God, love of the purity and innocence of Christ, and rejection of all that is evil produces in him a great act of hope. He commends himself, his soul, his whole being to Christ while others despair by looking at fewer sins than his. He does not look at his sins, at his wasted life anymore, but looks only upon Christ, his Savior. And what, then, does Jesus say to St. Dismas? Amen, I say to thee, this day, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. If Barabbas knew what he was missing, he would never have left that cell, but would have begged and pleaded to be crucified next to Jesus. Imagine if you had led the worst of all lives, if you violated every commandment there is, every law of the church, if you ruined all your relationships, if you failed at work, failed in your family, were unsuccessful at everything that the world considers a success, a total loser that no one would trade places with, avoided, derided, humiliated. If Jesus were then to tell you, this day you will be with me in paradise, what would anything else matter? Would any of your failures bother you? Would it matter at all if everyone else in the whole world held you in contempt? Would it matter what pains you suffered in your body or in your heart? Of all the people in the Gospels, our Lord says these words only to Saint Dismas, a sinner all his life, who only lived for an hour or so in Christ's grace. What must be the love that Christ has for those who spend more than their last hour in his friendship, who strive to follow his laws faithfully day after day. If he went to the ends of the earth to save St. Dismas, what efforts will he spend, has he spent, to save you? If he has so much mercy for his enemies, how much more so for his friends? And so what must you do to earn eternal life? You cannot be sinless, and it makes no difference what success you have in the eyes of the world. You cannot change the past, cannot undo your many sins. Every sinner is a thief who can never put back what he has stolen. All you can do then is be a good thief. Imitate Saint Dismas. See through all worldly failures and count them as nothing. See with the eyes of faith. Love what is good, holy, and innocent. Accept all sufferings humbly, all punishments do your sins. And place all your hope in Christ. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.